passing your IELTS test once shouldn't just be something you daydream about because when you devote your time to learning how this English exam works and practice with test questions, your fears and anxiety will disappear forever. With the right mindset and resources, you can achieve your desired band score in the IELTS exam, whether you need a band 7, band 8 or even a band 9. Join me at Deni Kebabalola every Friday for the IELTS weekly specials as we break down the four skills in the IELTS test through detailed explanations, easy to follow practice tests and stories of other test takers I have trained since 2017. Together, we will dust IELTS and you can finally get that job in the UK, that admission in Australia or become a permanent resident in Canada. Welcome to day six of our IELTS practice, okay? And I am delighted to be with you again. So if this is your first time of listening to my podcast, I I welcome you wholeheartedly and I hope that you have a wonderful experience learning with me today. And if you have listened to previous episodes and you want more, you are here for more, it's nice to have you come back. Today we are looking at the IELTS speaking and we are focusing on part two. That part where you have one minute to plan what you're going to say and you will speak for two minutes. So if you have always been scared of speaking for this long or you've been scared of this particular aspect of the speaking test, I just want you to at this point calm down. Okay, Adinike is saying calm down. And so I invite you to continue this episode with me. We're going to have an actual practice of a part two question. So I hope that you would stay till the end. And you would learn everything that I know as far as part two is concerned. But before we proceed, I want to remind you that there are six other episodes that you can listen to. Okay, I had one in December before I started fully in January. That's this, you know, January, this new year, 2024. So I'm just going to go ahead to mention the previous episodes and, you know, uh, I'll tell you what they were about so that you can go back to them if you haven't listened to them yet, okay? So there's there's a, there's a an episode. There's an episode on the listening multiple choice. That's multiple choice questions in the IELTS listening. So you can go back to that episode. You listen to me explain how to ha- answer questions, you know, MCQ questions in the listening part three. I focus on part three, actually, where you have two speakers. So you can listen to that and, of course, you know, become perfect or become a master of multiple choice questions. After that one, you see another one relating to note completion. The part four aspect of the listening tests, okay? That's one part where it looks as if the speakers, the speaker speaks, you know, very fast and says a lot. Of course, it's just one speaker in part four. So in that episode, I attempted a complete question 31 to 40. And of course, you would learn the strategies that you need to get every answer correct okay next one is reading summary completion that's a summary completion where they they take a summary of the passage and they ask you to bring in words from each of you know from from the passage all right and you know there are times when they give you a box and they tell you you know you have to choose an answer from that book so i attempted both types of the summary completion question and in that episode you will listen to that one okay next was matching headings where you have to give a paragraph a heading from a box okay so you listen to that one i completed the entire passage so you when you listen to that one you hear me um you you follow the process that i use to answer um, matching headings questions and you can replicate it in your own practice next we did uh, a question (laughs) a question on the opinion essay in writing, okay, IELTS writing task two, to what extent do you agree or disagree? This is one question that so many people, um, you know, find complex because they're not really sure what to do. So I attempted the question, I explained what to do, I read an examiner's feedback as well. And then the final, the last episode, which was, you know, episode five, but which is the total, you know, the sixth practice so far was about is this a good thing or a bad thing okay and that was another opinion essay question so today we are looking at the ielts speaking part two okay and we are taking a question from the cambridge book 18 
we are looking at a question from the Cambridge Bookcase scene. So I'm going to go ahead to share my screen with you for people who are, you know, listening on the, if you're listening to the podcast right now, well, definitely you're just depending on my voice. And if you have the book, if you have the Cambridge Book 18, whether it is, um, you know, the academic book or the general training book, I just want you to know that it is the same thing. So if you have the book, you can open your book and you can just look at it. Okay. So I'm going to read this question to you and then I would explain everything that it has to, you know, that, that, it, that it entails before we now actually answer the question. Okay. So we're not going to waste more time at all. Let me go ahead now to read the question to you. This part two question says, describe some food or drink that you learned to prepare. You should say what food or drink you learned to prepare when and where you learned to prepare this how you learned to prepare this and explain how you felt about learning to prepare this food or drink okay so this is what a part two question looks like in the ielts speaking now you would ask yourself excuse me what food did i learn what drink did i learn i know that not every one of us might have been you know recently learning you might not have learned a food how to prepare a food recently or how to make a particular drink and all of that so the first question that will come to your mind if this is you is what am i going to talk about okay that's that's what many people think about what am i going to talk about you know how am i going to say what i want to say how long can i speak for these are the questions that go through people's minds but i want you to know that If you get anxious as soon as the examiner gives you your cue card, when you look at the question and you begin to panic, you you run out of ideas immediately. It's it's not even run out of. The ideas would not come because you're already in panic mode. When you see a question, the first thing you do is just think about any context that is relevant to that question. So if you know somebody that learned to make her food or learn to you know, prepare a meal or you know a particular kind of drink, you can take on that person's experience and just imagine that it was you that made it. And if indeed you recently learned how to prepare a meal, then you can talk about it. But I'm just trying to show you that when you see a question, you don't have to become frightened because you think you don't know what to say. If you would just calmly allow yourself to take in the question, let it go through your mind, Honestly, you would find out what you want to talk about. It will come to you. Okay. So, well, um, we're focusing on part two today. In in other episodes, we're going to look at part one and part three and general strategies that you need for the IELTS speaking. But today we're looking at part two because it is the most intensive part of the IELTS speaking. Not because it, you know, I don't believe it has more marks and all of that. There are four criteria using the speaking test, okay? The first one is fluency and coherence. And there, the examiner checks your ability to speak fluently, to arrange your ideas in a coordinated way without breaking, without interruption, without hesitation, without repetition and all of those things. Your conversation is smooth. Okay, that's what fluency and coherence has to do with. And then when the next one is pronunciation, they don't expect you to have a British or an American accent. And they don't expect you to sound, not like sound perfect, but they want you to sound understandable. The, the core of it is when you speak, can anybody understand you? Can your listener understand you? So you, even if you have an accent, the point is, when you speak English, are you audible? Are you pronouncing your words correctly? And all of that, okay? Then the next one is lexical resource, which has to do with the vocabulary, the words you use, the idioms you use, the expressions you use, collocation, you know, the word pairs, how you pick your words, are they all appropriate to the topic you are talking about? And finally, you have grammatical range and accuracy. This has to do with the sentences you use, the tenses you use, are you answering a present question with a present tense? Are you talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, are you talking about a past action with a past tense? Are you talking about the future with future tense and the different types of these tenses? Tenses or, you know, and apart from that, they look at the the sentence structures. Are you using just one simple sentence pattern all the time, or are you mixing in complex? Now, one thing you need to know is the speaking test is informal. The IELTS speaking test is informal. You are not expected to sound all serious and professional and all of that. 
in fact this is the only part of the test that you can say it is extremely ways well, you know it's extremely informal and not because you're going to be cracking jokes and using um colloquial expressions and all of that no it's just that part where you are allowed to use things that you would not necessarily use in the ielts writing for example in the ielts writing you might not want to say kids you would want to say children especially in part two but in task two but when you come to speaking you can use kids my kids are this or kids are known for playing around and jumping around and all of that okay so that's just one example so back to our part two so when you see the part two question don't imagine that this is the only part where you know you you should be scared of and of course you shouldn't be scared of any part but the focus is this question is easy to understand this question is easy to answer and any part of the question can be easy to answer if you will just calmly receive the question think about it and then speak now that i have said that i want to go ahead to teach you the method that i have been using and that i have been teaching my students to use when they see part two questions okay don't go anywhere so i call my best strategy for part two i call it the storytelling method okay the storytelling method now i have said that whether you're taking the general training test or the academic test that's you know the whatever model it is you are taking of the IELTS test you will have the same speaking question okay and I want to quickly touch on something that people worry about you know whether the you know whether taking the test in person that's face to face or or you know it's sitting in front of a computer is you know the people want to know which one is easier and I just want to say they are the same thing it's just that when it's face to face the examiner is there with you you know <laughs> real life <laughs> and when it's you know vi in video format the examiner is on the screen i just want you to know that none of them should frighten you because this is just you speaking in a natural relaxed way and one thing i tell people when they prepare for the test you know i tell my learners that the best way to answer questions in part two is to imagine that you're gisting with a friend but so that we don't you know go overboard and i'll say okay you're, imagine you're talking to a friend you're just with a friend who cares about grammar pronunciation vocabulary and fluency okay so imagine that you're talking to a friend when you see the examiner as somebody you are already familiar with not because you want to abuse their position no but because you are putting yourself in a state of mind that is relaxed and when we are calm we naturally speak fluently we just things just come out of us ideas come out of us without any difficulty or hiccups so i want you to know that when you see a particular question the method that would always let me not say always what that always worked for me is the storytelling method tell a story answer the question in the form of a story look at this question it says describe some food or drink that you learned to prepare now if you when you see the question now the way the part two happens is unlike part one where the examiner will ask you about 12 questions on you know three to four aspects of your life when you come to part two it's just one question and it is this part two question that would determine the questions in part three not because they are just going to plan them but because the and the questions in part three are related to what you talk about in part two for example in this part three we are going to be talking about young people and cooking and working as a chef but in this episode we are focusing on part two okay so part two says describe some food or drink that you learned to prepare when you see that question what you need to know is it's either you remember a time in your own life where you prepared a you know you learned to prepare a food or a particular drink or you know somebody else that did it and then you now tell that experience as if it were yours now this is not lying and you know this is just you you being imaginative being creative i tell my learners all the time the examiner is not checking whether what you are saying is true or false they can't know anything like that it's not possible they're not going to investigate what they're interested in is 
how you convey what you're saying, how you communicate what you're saying. They want to know if you can speak on this particular topic in the way that is comfortable for you or in a way that you are familiar with. Okay. That said, let me use this illustration that I have always used. I have a bottle of what I hear with me. Now, the examiners are not so concerned about the whether you have water in the bottle or it's Coca-Cola. No. What they care about is the package of the bottle, how presentable it is. So imagine that your responses are this, this plastic bottle. Okay, so it has the small plastic wrap around it. It's a clear bottle. It has the, you know, the white cover on it. See your response like a bottle of water. So, you know, of course, the content within it matters in the sense that, you know, what you are bringing out is what you're going to say. What is in your mind is what you're going to say. But they don't really care about the authenticity of it. However, if what you are saying is true, if it is about your life, you will speak fluently because it's your personal experience. It will rush out of you. For example, I'm going to answer this question with, of course, I recently learned how to prepare some foods because I'm now in South Korea. I've spent almost a year in South Korea and I've learned to prepare Korean meals. I've learned to prepare at least five Korean foods since we moved here. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about one of these. But before we even get to that point, what I want you to learn is you need to know that it's either you share your personal experience or you pick the experience of somebody. In fact, if you don't know any particular person in your life that has learned how to prepare a food or a drink, what you can do is imagine, just go into your own world and just imagine yourself in preparing a meal even if you've not prepared that meal before just imagine when you can make use of your imaginative powers the ideas will come because you will tell us the food you will tell us when you learned to prepare it you will say where these things will come out of you because when the examiner gives you the cue card with this question on it there's there's also something that they say they say you will have one minute to think about the question you're going to have one minute to think about the question and within that time as the as the examiner is giving you the cue card they also give you a piece of paper and a pencil so that you can make some notes so when you get that piece of paper you quickly write the name of the food when you learn to prepare it was it around christmas was it around new year was it around easter was it around you know somebody somebody's event or a particular event then you write out where you learned it was it on youtube was it at a culinary school or something just put down those notes on your paper and then how you felt, you know, you will use an emotion. You were, you were happy, you were excited. You And of course, you can use expression, expressions, idiomatic expressions, okay? Or, you know, just expressions that allow you to, creative language in that sense. What am I saying to you? Part two is easy. The speaking, the IELTS speaking part two is, can be very easy to answer. If you would just either share, you know, decide to share your own personal experience or you will just focus on imagining your response. Now, the questions are not always the same, but I want you to know that the questions in the IELTS speaking are often repeated. Unlike the IELTS listening and reading and writing, questions in speaking part two or speaking, the speaking test are repeated. The first time I took the IELTS was 2017 and I started teaching people at the, towards the end of that year. I want you to know that the question I was asked in March of that year, I saw it in two books that existed before, that's two Cambridge books that existed before I even took that test, which, you know, I didn't know about those books when I took my test. And then I've seen this happen, you know, after that time. So if you go through past questions, not because you want to answer all of them, but you just want to familiarize yourself with the way the speaking questions are done. Okay, so I've told you that you can have questions about, you know, your, well, really, not necessarily yourself, but questions that require you to describe something that you are familiar with or that you know. So you can be asked to talk about a person or a thing or a place or an event. These are the questions that often come, often come up in part two. You would also be given, you know, I've told you, you'll be given the notes and the pen for you to write on. Now, I'm going to talk about this part two question. I'm going to answer this question now. 
because I have given you some explanation about what part two is involved or you know what it entails. Now I'm going to answer this question and I'm going to break it down so that you understand what I did. Okay, so don't go anywhere. Okay, so I'm going to answer this question. Describe some food or drink that you learned to prepare. You should say what food or drink you learned to prepare, when and where you learned to prepare this, prepare this, how you learned to prepare this, and explain how you felt about learning to prepare this food or drink. So normally I should give myself one minute to think about what I'm going to say, but I'm not going to bother about taking my one minute. I'm just going to proceed to speak since I'm here sharing this with you. But you know, if you're doing this with the examiner, you're definitely going to have one minute to think and make some notes before you now talk for two minutes. Okay, let's get to it. I'm going to talk about the time I prepared kimbap or I learned how to prepare kimbap, which is a popular Korean food. So my family and I moved to South Korea in early 2023 and I realized that because we would not have so much access to food from Nigeria it was important for me to learn how to prepare the meals that are eaten in this country so I went on YouTube and I searched for Korean foods and one channel that came up was Manchi Manchi she's a well-known youtuber who focuses on sharing Korean meals. I know she's, she's, she resides in the United States, but she has always shared videos about Korean meals. And so I looked through the videos and I found one that was familiar to me that, that I recognized and that was kimbap. So it looks like some rolled rice with veggies. You have this seaweed around it that brings, brings everything together and so i said okay this looks easy to prepare so i decided to watch the video i saw that first of all she you know prepared some rice and she set it aside while she was doing that she chose the veggies she was going to use she cut some carrots she seasoned with salt and set it aside she cut some bell peppers as well then there was radish she also adds some egg garnish and then she used some protein i think she used pork but i when i prepared mine i chose um, chicken in short i enjoyed watching her video because it was easy to prepare and bringing everything together just made me remember fried rice the way we prepare fried rice back in nigeria it's just that this was a different method so you know after i watched the video i instantly attempted it and i was so proud of myself because it turned out great and even though i did not really roll the rice so perfectly the way Manchi did I was happy that for the first time I prepared a Korean meal and it was wonderful and of course my family loved it so this is one of the meals I've learned to prepare of course I've also learned how to prepare tteokbokki and um, the gochujang jjigae and a couple of other things but I just want to say that this is one meal that I have enjoyed preparing and when people meet me when Koreans meet me and ask you know if i eat any korean food and i say kimbap and they say oh kimbap it makes them very excited and it makes me feel very welcome so that's that's been my experience so far okay that was my speaking part two attempt what do you think about it <laughs> i know i repeated myself a couple of times but i think it was a good response what do you think let me not be my own judge i want you to judge me what do you think about that response do you think i covered everything on the cue card if you're using your own cambridge 18 book i'm sure that you know you can see the question and you can measure whether or not i completed it. but if you remember the question even if you don't have your book with you do you think i covered every part did i say the food did i say when did i say where did i did i talk about how i learned to prepare it and how i felt i want you to please share your feedback with me you can join if you're not already receiving emails from me you can check the show notes you find the link to join the newsletter you can also find me on nearly every social media platform as mother isn't murder podcast okay so you can send me a message on instagram on facebook on twitter which is x on um tiktok as well you know you can find me on all of these platforms even on linkedin okay and just let me know what you think about this particular response that i gave but you, i want you to know that there are more than one ways of answering the speaking part two test and you know question but the most important thing is let the cue card guide you Okay, so you will see that I talked about the food, 
I talked about when I had to learn it when we when we moved here. I talked about where I watched it or where I learned it. This was on YouTube. I talked about the person's procedure. That that part was me. If you follow, you notice that I was. It feels as if I put my experience in your head, and that's what you should try to do when you are speaking with the examiner. Okay, it's as if you are creating that experience again. If you can do that, you will be lost in your speaking. You will not be interested in the two minutes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me tell. Let me show you something. I turned on the clock, the stopwatch on my on my phone, so that I would tell you how long I spoke for. Normally, you won't have your watch with you. The examiner would be the one that has access to the time. And they expect you to complete the two minutes, okay? So you won't be able to save the time when you are speaking. But of course, if you are still practicing right now, you can use your stopwatch. I stopped at two minutes, 29 seconds, okay? The, the examiner might not allow me to speak for that long. Once they realize I've responded to the question, you know, they will stop. But for me, I just wanted to give my question a good, a good closing, okay? So the examiner might not let you go, you know, this way. But of course, once you've answered the question, you know, you've done a great job. The most important thing is try to cover the four parts of the question. So how do you know that you have spoken for two minutes? It is about preparing now. I want you to prepare. Start preparing now. Remember that this question has four parts. You, not like four parts per se, but your cue card has four ideas. Okay, it's, the first one is what food or drink you learn to prepare. Since you have two minutes, just divide that 120 seconds into four. What do you have? 30 seconds. Imagine that you're going to spend 30 seconds on each aspect of the cue card, of the you know question. Now, this does not mean that you will you look at it, then you talk. You look at it, then you talk. No, that's not the approach. The point is because you've had some time to make notes on your paper, on the piece of paper that the examiner gave you, then it means that you will just connect. You just be connect, moving from one to the next. You can look at it to remind yourself of where you are and to be sure that you have covered all. But you don't want to be looking at it and pausing and continuing. You don't want to give that break in between. Okay? So you see that you know i took my time to combine everything and i was really in i was loving my response so i wasn't focused on the time so if the examiner stopped me at around at exactly two minutes i believe i would have answered i've answered the question already okay so but you are the best person to know because you listened to me i can't remember everything that i said but i just want you to say that remember that this question used past tense describe some food or drink that you learned to prepare Okay, so because the question is in past tense, your response will also be in past tense. Okay, you know, where did you watch it in past tense? What food was it in past tense? You know, how you learned to, to pray in past tense. But of course, in the process of describing, you know, I said I saw how she cut the carrot, she took this. Those things, you might use some, you know, past progressive and all of that in between. I just want you to know that the most enjoyable way the, the way you would really enjoy your part two is if you go into that imaginative space where you're just telling a story and that thing is coming to you. Even if you are asked to talk about a museum, they, you know, they can be, you can be asked to talk about different questions. One thing I want you to know is once you can imagine, whether it is your personal experience or the experience of somebody else or the experience of, you know, an experience you wish to have but you have not yet had it, just take it and talk about it okay i remember a question that i know that i always had a problem with and that problem had to do with um i can't recall right now i think a museum you know visiting a museum and everything and i think at the time i had not yet maybe visited the museum i knew about so you know i didn't have the expressions to use i didn't have the words to use and everything but after visiting the one I had a better understanding of a museum and everything. So I'm not saying you should go and visit all the places or you should go and try all the foods out there. You don't necessarily have to do that. The questions in part two won't be technical. They won't be, you know, they won't be specialized questions that are only perfect for some people. But I just want to say that as much as possible, expose yourself to different kinds of questions in the speaking part two. Go through past questions. Go through books. I want you to give yourself, you know, make your mind rich. As far as part two speaking is concerned, for example, what I do for my learners, people who sign up for my paid training is when they sign up, when they enroll with me, I give them access to my 
google drive there's this google drive link that they get that allows them to listen to 10 speaking questions speaking test questions that i attempted from books i think from books um 11 and 15 or 11 12 15 there about so they get to listen to different questions all right and you know this is another practice if you're listening to this one you know it means that this is this is another one and you can even go on my youtube channel i have some practice tests that i attempted on youtube okay so my name on youtube is adenike babalola adenike babalola when you listen to those ones as well you would see that speaking is simple it's just about you being relaxed you being calm and saying see this question i can do it i can answer this question okay so i hope that this practice has helped you remember that you know they call it anecdote telling a story and drawing out a lesson from it will help you to answer your question this is how you expand this is how you extend your responses and you know it even applies in part one and part three as well you can give a response and then you can build it up with maybe an example or a reason or you know just something so i, I want you to know that the speaking part two is simple Somebody reached out to me in late 2023, one of my students, but she had not been in touch for a while. So I believe she had been busy with some things and all. And so she reached out to me and said, Ma, I was told that my examiner would be a foreigner and I'm just very afraid and everything. I said, well, as far as I know, maybe eight or nine out of 10 examiners, well, back in Nigeria, I know there'll be Nigerians, okay? So they are trained British Council examiners. It may be just one, it's just one or two people that could be that would be from another you know location. I remember that when I took the test in 2017, the woman looked like a Ghanaian. I'm, I'm not sure, but she she looked like a Ghanaian. And the person who tested me in 2021 was a Yoruba woman like me. I remember her name Omobola. I'm not going to say the full name. <laughs> okay. So what I'm just trying to say is irrespective of who your examiner is i want you to know that your questions will be easy they'll be straightforward and you will do very well once you know the strategies that you need so i don't want you to panic i want you to calm down this woman that i i i spoke with i you know we we had a speaking session and she went on to have a band eight in speaking this is one of my paid learners in fact somebody reached out to me last week she she was somebody else referred her to me and she's not a paid she you know she didn't pay for my training and everything she just said she has a speaking test i think tomorrow the, maybe the day after and you know she doesn't she's afraid of it and everything and i said okay i will send you the link to my google to my samples in the google drive the 10 of them listen to them and do well i was happy when she reached out to me yesterday to say thank you ma i have done my test and you know i'm awaiting my results i was glad to hear that because you know speaking it shouldn't be a problem it shouldn't be difficult once you have listened to sample questions in fact there's somebody on youtube that i recommend keith there's keith o'hare i hope i pronounce his name right is this is a very nice man he teaches well it's clear it's straightforward i think it's i think it's called ielts speaking success or something like that so if you check him out on youtube you know you it will you would his videos will really help you okay but this is just me providing you with as many resources as possible i know that if you if you sign up for your training with the british council they have webinars that you can attend where you can learn a lot of things so once you pay for your test you might not even need you know if you pay for your test right up you might not need to you know pay for somebody to train you you just go with the ielts ielts ready premium that they have you go through their lessons you do the mock test you can do a speaking mock test and you know it will help you you i think you i think i'm not sure if you get feedback i remember right now but this is me just saying that you don't have to be afraid of the speaking test it's just it's just a human being like you and it's just they're just questions there are questions that will be, you know, things that you can easily talk about. And if, if you don't have personal experiences, you can talk about people's experiences. So I want you to, if you are afraid of the speaking test, I want you to just place your arms on your chest and say, I can do it. I am calm. I'm going to speak well. I'm going to have a wonderful experience at my speaking test. And remember that everything, the entire speaking test is not more than 14 minutes. Everything lasts 11 to 14 minutes. Okay, so this is everything about today, but don't go any, anywhere. I, I have more information that I want to share with you, okay?
okay so that is everything for today but i just want to remind you to listen to the previous practice test that we have done okay so that you know you can get access to whatever knowledge that you need all right and then i've talked about you visiting my youtube channel to listen to more practice tests so that will also help you don't forget that you can follow me on all the social media platforms that you have out there i am where you are <laughs> You can find me where you are, okay? So whether it's Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, X, um, what other one do you have there? TikTok, I am where you are, okay? So you can find Mother Isn't Murder podcast and we can do this IELTS journey together so that whether you're going to study in, the, in, the, in Canada or Australia or in the US or you want to work in the UK, you want to become a permanent resident what, in Canada, whatever it is, that dream just has to happen. And this IELTS should not be a reason why it won't happen, okay? So I'm here to make sure that I play my part to help you achieve, you know, achieve the result that you need, whether you need. I think my last IELTS result, my speaking was about 8.5, the one I took in 2021. But in 2017, it was about 8. And I'm still looking forward to getting about 9. <laughs> it's not impossible. One of my students, had, I think two of my students, as far as I remember, had about 9. In speaking so it's very possible it's not just it's not impossible it's not just something out there it is doable okay so you mem remember that you can join the newsletter so you can receive emails from me to get updates about new episodes and whatever else i have or that i'll be sharing as far as ielts is concerned next in the next episode we are looking at map labeling in the ielts listening this is another one this is another question type that traumatizes people map labeling you have a map and they tell you where is this where is that where is this so people feel where are they where are they like where exactly are they so we're going to look at this question type in the next episode and of course the videos all of the videos that you know for this for this sessions all the videos for this episode will be available as from early february i'm going to make sure the videos are available in early february so that you can watch the videos if you want to do that you know but this is just the podcast episode right now helping you get what you need i guess that's everything for this you know this session i had a wonderful time sharing my knowledge with you and i hope you did as well so don't forget to send me feedback reply my email let me know what did you learn what was the new thing you learned and of course you were supposed to judge my speaking response my part two response so let me hear from you whether it's on social media or email all right thank you so much i will see you in the next one stay well bye So what did you learn from today's episode? What is that new thing you are taking away from this session? Remember that getting your dream IELTS result boils down to how you prepare and what resources you prepare with. If you would like to join my online IELTS training program, where you watch me explain each skill in detail and practice each question type under the four skills in the IELTS test, click the link in the show notes below. And if you enjoyed listening to this episode, please rate and review this podcast show and share this episode with somebody you know who is also preparing for the IELTS test. Let us meet again next Friday for another chance to dust the IELTS test and achieve your study, work, or immigration goals. I am Adeni Kebabalola and you just listened to IELTS Weekly Specials on Mother Isn't Mother. Bye!